A word problem involving an ellipse. The curved edge of the doormat below is half an ellipse, a semi-ellipse. As shown in the figure below, the flat edge of the doormat measures 164 centimeters, and the distance from the center to the curved edge is 52 centimeters. The distance from the point P to the curved edge is 11 centimeters. Find the distance from P to the center. Round your answer to the nearest hundred. Do not round any intermediate computations. If you take a careful look at your picture, this was the given picture. Uh, unfortunately, it's clearly not the scale. It's not a very good picture here. Uh, so if you notice that, you might want to draw it to your own scale. You can actually redraw it. And do the best you can. I mean, there's the ellipse or the semi-ellipse. Uh, so the black line here is representing the major axis. The problem I have here is that the 52 centimeters is down here, but 11 centimeters is only one fifth of that. So 11 centimeters should be about here. So that means point P is really about here. So this would be probably a better scale. Now your center is really, really, really important. We're gonna use a technique that's used in physics and in calculus a lot. You actually have to locate your own center. And you wanna pick your center to be very, very convenient. I just, draw, I just drew a dotted axis. And I'm gonna call that axis the x-axis. I'm gonna draw another dotted axis here. And that is gonna be called, of course, the y-axis. So what's a convenient location Let's use our classic blue dot or blue star. And let's call that to be the origin, zero, zero. And that will locate your doormat. Uh, it will give location to every single point on the ellipse now. Ah, this is very, very convenient. You're given the major axis already. So from here to here, you know how much this is. This is actually 82 centimeters. You're also given the minor axis. The minor axis uh, from, let's say here, if I drew this solid right now, uh, this is actually 52. Uh, and of course that is equal to B, and 82 is equal to A, according to our standard forms of an ellipse. Ah, so that's fairly convenient. Because now you could actually label this. Labeling is a mathematical skill. Drawing is a mathematical skill. You want to draw and label this to be what? P comma negative 11. And how do I know it's negative 11? Because you, yourself, drew the origin right here. So you got to label this relative to the origin. So that is going to be the distance P right here. From, P, from here to here is P. This is what we're looking for. Uh, why don't I highlight it in yellow? This distance here is what we're looking for. And that is going to be called P. Hmm. All right. Why don't we develop the equation of this ellipse in standard form. So we have x squared, and we know that a squared is underneath the x squared, plus uh, y squared, and we know that b squared is under the y squared. Uh, a is half the distance of the major axis, and the major axis is along the horizontal direction. Now we're gonna set this equal to one, so we have our equation of the ellipse. I'm going to take this point right here, and we're going to substitute it in there. Well, what do you mean substitute in there? Well, we're going to have p squared uh, over what? Over a squared 
plus. Uh, what's y? Well, y is negative 11. And what are we going to do with that negative 11? We are going to square it. Put it over what? Put it over b squared is equal to 1. And now we're going to go ahead and solve for uh, p. Let's multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator to clear fractions. So over here, we're going to multiply by a squared times b squared. Over here, we're going to multiply by a squared times b squared as well. The so 1 there. What do we have? We have p squared over b, uh, b squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Take that back. Do, 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 do. a squared is reduced, and we have p squared times b squared. plus 121a squared is equal to a squared times b squared. Now we know b squared is not 0. So now we have p squared is equal to hmm, a squared times the quantity b squared minus 121. Yeah all over b squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And you got to remember that a is greater than b and greater than 0. The key is that they're both greater than 0. They're both positive. Uh, why is that really, really important? We get p is now equal to uh, plus or minus the absolute value of a over the absolute value of b times the square root of b squared minus 121. Now it's very, very important that you note that a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. That implies that the absolute value of a is a. And that implies that the absolute value of b is b. So we got p is now equal to plus or minus a over b times the square root of b squared minus 121. Now we're ready to put, put in the numbers. Uh, p is equal to plus or minus. What was a? 82. b was 52. Uh, b squared is, well... 52 squared minus 121. Go ahead and use the order of operations and perform this on your calculator. You should get P here is equal to plus or minus 80 decimal 1, 4, 4, 3, 1. And of course, there's lots of decimal places after that. We're trying to round to the nearest hundred. So why don't we look at the thousands place? The thousands place is a 4. So we're going to round this down to um, 14 hundredths. Now, uh, we're really ready to answer this question. Notice that P is greater than 0 as well. So the distance from P to the center is... 80 decimal 14 hundredths, right? Or 80 and 14 hundredths centimeters. Circle that. State it like you mean it. Don't forget your labels. Make sure you label centimeters. We're not talking about miles, kilometers. Uh, we're not talking about feet. We're talking about centimeters. Some important algebra that you want to look after uh, is definitely uh, some really, really key steps that you want to show are actually right here. Uh, well, everything. You know, try to repl replicate all these steps. I would recommend that you do not skip any of these steps. So try to replicate all these steps. Every single detail.